I, I do want to touch on this because I think it's rad. We actually have one of the boards here because oh, yeah. I think it's like, you know, as skateboarding, skateboarder, skate, skateboarding companies, uh, I think sustainability is really mm-hmm. an issue um, yep. that we need to work on, you know, yeah. and it's not going to happen overnight, but I think that, and we talked about it a little bit before the show is that little by little, inch yeah. by inch, we can get there, but we just have to start, start doing stuff. somewhere. Start we, we, somewhere. We, we, we sat around going, you know, obviously, you know, we can all do things, you know, we, we, we manufacture products. Yes. yes. Right. We're, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're using resources, where we, you know, there's a factory there that makes things. And we would sit around and go, okay, we need to start looking at, you know, what are our manufacturing processes? What are, what are the materials that we're using? And at a certain point, we, we were like, hold on a second. It's not, we don't have to do one massive thing. We just have to start doing things. Something. Mm-hmm. Something. Little things, Small, little, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. so we've done a number of things over the last couple of years. I mean, first, first and foremost at the factory itself, um, really like uh, for the last like six to eight years, they've been, you know, there's a lot of uh, regulations and stuff that are being implemented, good ones, you know, to do with your manufacturing processes, how you handle waste, how the, how, you, know, uh, w- you know, what is the manufacturing environment? What, you know, how are you handling your waste? Mm-hmm. What are you, you know, processes, materials? And so there's a lot of sort of um, requirements that are required. We, you know, our, our factory is in, in China mm-hmm. and uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, good and new regulations in there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're really proud of our factory there and it's ahead of its, you know, it's compliant on all these levels. We've gone through some really, uh, there, 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 are, there are third party organizations you can go to that will walk into your facility and they'll basically, uh, you know, you, 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 you Assess. I'm getting tongue-tied right now. I'm, I'm, I'm having a, an old man mental <laughs> thing here. Um, there, there are sort of manufacturing processes in place, and you want to go in there, you want to, make, you want to validate those. Gotcha. Right? So it's, you, you, we've done a bunch of factory audits uh, at a certain level. And we've done, we, we, we first did the audit because we, had, we were doing some manufacturing for not any of our brands, but a, a, a third party and we needed to meet Disney requirements. Got you. So we're like, oh, what does this mean? <laughs> and uh, basically a third party comes into the factory, they walk through the factory and they came back and- They kind of do an audit? They basically, basically they come in, they audit the factory mm-hmm. for safety, manufacturing processes and everything. And there were some minor adjustments, but effectively the factory passed immediately. And oh, we were yeah. like, this hmm. is incredible. Hmm. So they had implemented a lot of the new um, water filtration systems, mm. all the, the, these air purifying and um, safety, safety standards. And the factory had always been a great place to go. When I first went there in 2005, I was like, what am I, what am I walking into? Mm. And it was not what I expected when I first went there. Oh. And I think in large part, it's because the factory is run by women. Mm. Wow. There is Mrs. Chen, that number one. owns the factory. There's QC number one, uh-huh. quality control number one. There's Ting, three women who probably know more about manufacturing of skateboards than anyone else. Um, wow. Yeah. Basically, they've, they've, they've implemented all these manufacturing processes uh-huh. that now meet really high standards, high standards of safety, efficiency, and uh, obviously um, uh, uh, you know, pollution and, and, and meeting all the standards sure, there. So sure. we go through these audits, we do them every two years, and that is a, a bar uh, of itself. Mm. But then in addition to that, um, we started looking at, well, what are we doing? Where, where, where can we make a difference? So. About four years ago, or five years ago, we said, you know what, let's just partner with some organizations, right? We, we, if we can like support organizations to you know, replace some of the natural resources that we, we're using, let's mm-hmm. do it. So we partnered with the National Forest Area Foundation, globally recognized organization, very large, very reputable. And basically, for, you know, we're, we're, we're basically replacing three trees, three to one. Okay. Oh, so. Wow. For every every tree we take we, we take out of the ground, we're putting three back in, three back, three back in. Working with those guys now for f- four, going on our fifth year. Oh, amazing! And that's that's great, and that's just basically contributing money and funds to that organization. Gotcha. But then recently this year, and then the other thing that we started honestly about eight years ago was like looking at a skateboard and going, all right, it's a wood skateboard. That's okay. Glue, mm, not mm. such a great material, right? So honestly, yeah, well, especially resin epoxies, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, so about eight years ago, 
literally eight years ago, I was like, Eric, who's our R&D guy, so skateboarding guy, engineer, good guy. Um, I was like, well, how do we, let's, we need to work on some, is it soy-based glues or different types of glues? Mm. And we went around and none of them had the same attributes, none of them performed right. And then about two, two years ago, we stumbled across uh, uh, this company that had uh, this glue that they put out there and it's used in the snowboard industry and the surf industry. Mm. So we're using this Entropy Super Sap glue, okay. which is basically, uh, it's a glue that has the same attributes as the resin epoxy that we use. Okay. So from life, strength, just you know, in that. But the, the way the glue is made, it's used with you know biodegradable recycled materials. The manufacturing process itself has a much lower carbon footprint mm. than, um, than the glues that we're using. And we're like, we're all in. Let, let, let's, let's check this out. Because then, just because you found something that works doesn't mean it will, will work. Gotcha. You've got you to yeah. look at costing and you've got to look at like, how does, the, how does the material work in our manufacturing process? Because right. you can have an idea and it's great. Rodney's Uberboard, right? We figured the Uber board out, and then it took us a year and a half to figure out how to make more than three of them a day. <laughs> 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 right? Like literally, yeah. you know? And that's what Rodney rides, and we still make, we make that board. It's a very expensive board to make, but we make that that's our, <laughs> because that's what Rodney wants. So that's, awesome, what, we, that's sure. what we make. That's there awesome. If, if that's what he wants, that's what we make, right? <laughs> but it literally took like a year and a half to go from like hand making those boards to actually being able to commercialize them and actually put them into a production line and, wow, and actually wow. make them. So with SuperSap, um, we identified it, but honestly, about two, two and a half years ago. Then we go through that process. And yeah, we just, we, we did a soft launch around Earth Day this year mm -hmm. where we seeded the market and um, we're about to release it. Really excited about that. So there's the, 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 the actual glue itself. And then we looked at it and said, you can't wrap this board in shrink wrap. Right. You can't put a bunch of inserts in this that de defeats the whole purpose of the board. Yes. Yeah. So then we went and go, all right, we've got to figure out how do we ship these things? Like, you have no idea how hard it is to find a brown paper bag in China that you can just put a board in. They really? don't exist. We're li we've literally been told you can't find a brown paper bag. You gotta manufacture it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. We, paper cutting machine. Honestly, this is a weird one because you would think making a paper bag would be eight easy. inch wide or eight and a half will be easy. We can't seem to locate. It's awesome. Wow. So, a weakness in our manufacturing. Okay. But, wow. So anyway, we went down a different path and we, we found these. Um, like, yeah, we have them here. here. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Look. So they come in these. Right. What does that say there? This bag self destructs. So it's 100% compostable bag. I love it. Love it. Um, they could use it again, too. Yes. Yeah. No more shrink wrap. Yeah. Right. And uh, let's get rid of shrink wrap as an industry, right? Hey, and so these this are is, these. This is what I was talking about. The little steps. You yeah. Know? So this is just one step right here, and this right. to me is. Oh, it does come with an insert, but it's recycled cardboard. There you go. There Whoops. you go. So basically, none of the plastic inserts and everything. There's your skateboard. Amazing. And uh, no more shrink wrap. So I think for this for me, shrink wrap is something. And again, take the next step. Yeah. Plastic. Mm -hmm. We just took the plastic packaging off of about. Pretty much every accessory item that you can ship without so plastic. Sick. Wow. I think wheels are the only ones that are left with plastic packaging. Interesting. And then the other thing that we need to do, because again, it's a journey. Mm -hmm. We want to, uh, again, just get, you know, we ship, you know, we sell a lot of completes, or whatever, and they come in plastic bags. Right. Uh, the cost, this is expensive. The cost That's is cost ask. prohibitive for us to just push completes in it. But mm -hmm. we just reduce the bags that completes go in by 15%. Amazing. So How long does it take for those bags to break down? Um, we actually have some photographs of this online. If you actually go online ah, to so Dwindle, rare. then there's a little little thing in there about Super Sap and stuff. And we have pictures of this uh, 15 days, 30 days, and 45 days really? breaking down. Yeah. Damn. Ernie from our art department took one of these boards and just buried it in his backyard. No way. Dug it up, took a photograph, put it back in. So wow. Sick. Yeah. So no, it's just some fun. But so, anyway, go okay. ahead, please, please. So basically, this is, uh, 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 this is again, it, uh, it's a small step. Mm. But it's a step. Yes. Yeah. Right. And a that's what we're talking and, about. And that here, is what we're sure. talking about. Yeah. 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 So in dealing with the glue, the super sap, all that stuff, mm -hmm. I mean, how was the testing period for this? Did you have to just make samples, give it to yeah, writers, yeah, 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 yeah. see yeah. how you? I mean, you. Did that was the like whole, a six. They say that was like a six to nine month process. Six to nine month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Process. Like because you don't want to just do one batch. No, no, no for you sure. Press up a hundred boards. Put them out there. The writers oh, do another batch. Okay. You know. What was the writer? What did they? The writers yeah, the say feedback. about it. The the uh, same as Resin Seven. Oh, so sick. same as Resin, Resin okay. Epoxy. So yeah. for us, that's awesome. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, that's I mean, it was a long journey to get here. Yeah, but it's I'm worth it. Pleased right. to be here, and you know, big time. The, the, yeah, 
so this is this is one of the things that we're doing. I think that um, it's incredible. It's you know again for me the, the the thing I put out there to, to skate shops and uh, and other manufacturers is you know just do one thing right do it right one step at a time and if you know globally is if is as individuals or as companies or retailers or whatever you do one step at a time you know well that one thing will turn into two things yeah will turn into yeah. three yeah. And, so we, we so we've taken an approach we're actually measuring ourselves so we've ah. actually put out online like like how are, how how much we've re how much plastic we've reduced mm. so you can see like in this category zero reduction in plastic so far this category 100% reduction in plastic so it's a goal to put out there so that we can then go we've set a benchmark now how can we do better next year yeah, and how can we do sure. better next year so, I love that so you know, are every so cool. is are all the boards made with this now or is it just certain select and then select. you look okay we're, we're transitioning it so again this has there's a cost impact to this yes. mm -hmm. so you know we're trying not to pass all of that along but these are a little you know a couple of bucks more than a regular resin 7 say, sure. so right now right now i'd say we've probably gone from resin 7 this is maybe 15 percent, 20 percent of the line mm. and the goal would be to take that to 30 percent, 50 percent, and at some point 100 percent of, of the line Let's see. and then we're looking at these similar manufacturing processes in other other areas mm -hmm. we've got a new impact thing that we're working on next Amazing. year where we're changing the materials up in that to be yeah. again you know, a little more earth friendly. I it, like, like you said, it just, it's the steps, you yeah. know, like we're, we can get there, you know, yeah. but I think skateboarding needs some type of, you know, sustainability well, direction. The you know? world yeah. needs it. Yes. Yeah. Well, yes. The world, 100%. The world needs yeah. it, right? Yeah. But, you know, listen, we are an industry that skates wood yeah you know trees cut down well, like there's a lot of things you know plastics like you said like a lot of it goes into yeah well, a lot of it goes into like i think we're one of the few companies i'll say this there are very few skateboard companies that make skateboards right you produce your less own. There's a tiny percentage actually make skateboards yeah and for me that was one of the appealing things about dwindlers like well i mean that's like a 14 year old's like dream yeah I had this idea. I've always wanted to do this. Please make it for me. Yeah. Make it for you. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's pretty exciting. So, I think when we have when you have that sort of um, ability, you should try to not only you want to make products that function, mm -hmm. last, but then if we can also now really take this next approach and be thinking about all right, well then what is our impact and what is our contribution? Then you go so, down the road. So we're trying to we're, we're trying to do it on, on multiple levels. So you've got it on the just reaching out to different organizations and supporting organizations. You got to do it within it, within, within the product, you know, within the stuff that we make. And then, you know, it's, we have a, a crew, we have an internal crew for, uh, uh, our, you know, sustainability and, uh, I love it. Social compliance as we call Beautiful. it. Beautiful. And it's social compliance, not necessarily from a, like a factory perspective, but just what can we be doing that is meaningful? Yes. Um, you know, Supporting Skaterstan is another thing that we do. And that's very near and dear to me. There's mm -hmm. a lot of people in skateboarding that support Skaterstan as they should. Yes. For me, that's one that I've tried to make a active part of our sort of annual thought process and not a one year thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Ongoing. Right. <laughs> right. So let's have the Skaterstan program up and running. Keep that. Keep it going. Let's get this going with the National Forestry Foundation. Keep that. Yeah. And continue doing what you start. Absolutely. Yeah, right? yeah absolutely. You know, so yeah, so yeah, this is this is this has been a lot of work and even if it wasn't the it was just getting rid of shrink wrap, that's a great step. Yes. It's a huge uh, step. Huge. You know? Huge. What was so uh, it's awesome to hear that you guys have your own factory, but what was was there perks of that going into this pandemic of like people are struggling getting boards? What was that like on your guys' end? We were still struggling to get boards. St still struggling? Yeah. Well, yeah, the, that's that's the, a whole shipping thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 The yeah. chain, so, the, chain I mean, the supply chain. There's a whole bunch of things in that 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 side of the business that, that are really rather boring but meaningful. Like, I mean, what's going on with with shipping and port delays and stuff like that has just been completely. And they're making more money than ever right now, too. Yes. How, how so? Supply well, and demand. Yeah, yeah. yeah but at yeah, the same I mean, time, like yeah. they're charging you storage. There isn't. There's actually a new thing I was hearing about today from some of the people at work where. If you don't get your container out of the the, the, the port by a certain, yeah, time, a certain time, they start charging you a yeah, per day exactly. wow. fee. Yeah, but you can't get yeah, your, you can't get your container out because there's no, no chassis, chassis and no trucks. Yeah. Because all the empty containers <laughs> are on chassis and they have no room for the empty containers mm. at the ports. It's, it, I, I will it's call not it even their fault. 
It's legalized extortion. Right. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Right. I heard people are dumping them into the ocean. No. You, I heard that. I heard that. that I hope there's something. That's not a good place to be dropping containers of. I know. This, I, I heard that, that like people, if there's something in there that they, you're right. like, oh, okay, let's just get rid of that. Yeah. I've heard that. They're uh, dumping them in the neighborhoods too. Those fucking canisters are just really yeah. after they dump them. After they get rid of this, and then the, the guys are not waiting to like get those moved. They're just like later. No, and dropping but, them but into you the asked neighborhoods. you asked a question there about you know are there advantages of having your own and I'll I'll go back to the beginning mm -hmm. of when Rodney and Scotty Jensen, Frank Messman, previous management, went over to to China, two thousand one, two thousand two thousand one ish. To, 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 to break ground. And the advantages there was, I don't think a skateboarder had thought about building presses and manufacturing skateboards before then. Mm. And so again, respect where it's due. Like Rodney and Scotty's approach to that was like, I mean, single deck pressing. Why would you press five decks in one press when you can yeah. make a press that, that presses, you know, seven to nine individually. You have full control. Yeah, and keeps the mold, you know, keeps yeah. every board identical. Sure, sure. And then there were all these other small things in the manufacturing process that, that, that again, going back to Rodney, perfected was, you know, just simple processes to make sure that the relationship between your truck holes and your tail, when it comes out of the presses and goes through the drilling and that whole thing, were truly staying in the, in, in the, the position they were supposed to be. Because, yeah. you know, two um, millimeters this way, two oh. millimeters that way, your, 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 your board's imbalanced, you know? For sure. So there was all these steps, we used to call it the 14 steps of quality control, you know? Like all these like 14 steps in the manufacturing of a deck that was put in place and then fine tuned and then evolved over the last 20 years. Right. That, you know, there's some great wood shops out there. I think we have a great wood shop too. There you go. Yeah, That's yeah. awesome. It's funny. Who was on the show? It was like a Caballero or Hasoy. They were saying that back in the day, these skate companies would manufacture their own products. Mm -hmm. That went away. It was all third party sourcing. Yeah. And he was like, you're not a, what was he saying? Like, you're not a skateboard you're company. You're not a skateboard company if you don't make your own skateboards. It was Steve Caballero. It was oh, Cal. Steve, basically right, George Powell, basically. Like, I mean, George, George has done incredible yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. and he's dealing with urethane too, which is oh, like, really yeah, he's cool. got yeah. incredible boards too. As right. well as he's, he's pressing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's, you know, again, you got hats off. He's, that's awesome. I just thought that was a funny way to look at it. I was like, oh, well, that's what I'm saying. Otherwise, you know? you're, you know, yeah. yeah. You're, but again, well, you're just a you're buyer a and a company. seller. You're a marketing yeah, company. I, yeah. I, yes, they're marketing. I mean, people go in and they create their own molds and they create yeah, their own shapes course, and, and, and all of that. But being able to, I mean, I'll, I'll take the business hat off because I'll just go back to the, as a skateboarder being able to go in and like tinker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or have an idea. And it's like, oh, I, it, 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 that's Bro. like, that for me personally is like really been some of, for me, the, the, the most personally satisfying things yeah. of my life is going, I had an idea and it happened. Well, and, he, and being able to do that has been like super. And like, I just totally. experienced this recently because I did a twin paddle board, you know, symmetrical, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I didn't, ha I didn't go in and make my own molds or this or that. It was yeah. just like a concept like, hey, I want a symmetrical board. I want this shape, but I don't. So they sent me like a twin tail, twin mm -hmm. nose and a hybrid. You I know? believe yeah. DSM made that board. There you go. So <laughs> for me, it was very exciting because I had never gone Got through it. any steps right. of creating. It was just like, what shape do you want? I like this shape. Yeah. Here's your graphic. You know, so yeah. going through this process, I'm very proud and excited yeah. for having to, you know, have a, well, it brings a, different, a, it brings a, a different, hand in it, it, it. You know, it gives you a different very, feeling if you actually, totally. you know, and then you, because it was your idea. Yeah. You're like, well, symmetrical is not my idea, no, but no, having but, but that. Whatever, but, but your, your, your specs, your shape, yes, yes. whatever. Yeah, see your, it come to life is beautiful. Yeah, yeah no, you know? I've never was, done that before. It was still your idea that came to fruition. Whether it's the, the it evolved from you, it still right. was your idea in the chocolate. Yeah, I mean, chocolate and a girl yeah. never had a exactly. symmetrical board. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm like, this is what I want. I, yeah. This is what yeah. I skate. We need, there's a mark, like, I'm well, seeing you should, more. You should link up with R&D people and go ride with them and. I mean, let I'm them watch you and see where your feet are. Listen, you, Paul you know. Schmidt has been asking forever sure. to go fucking perfect my manuals. You know, What's up? <laughs> is it hey, Eric? Is it, you know what? Again, there's a few great people who develop products in, in, in skateboarding. He's one of them. You know? He is definitely. You've yeah. got you've got him. You've got Tim Pumada from NHS. Mm. 
you got a few people in our building. You know, Eric's Eric's great. I always Again, hear a lot about Eric. Rod, Rodney. What, what's yeah. that? Rodney? I hear a lot about Eric. Eric. I always well, hear his name like, dude, he did this, he's doing this, or he's testing this. I'm like, wow, that's awesome. Well, he's, he's also a generation below Paul and Tim, mm -hmm. and he comes from a formal engineering background. Dude, Eric Sentian? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Went to university, you know, I always get it wrong when I talk about his qualifications, but, you know. <laughs> He's a he's wizard. Qualified. <laughs> he's a wizard. Right. There you go. He's completely right. qualified. <laughs> he's a wizard and he skates. So he can actually go out and he can watch you. Yes. Right. And right. rather than what you're selling him, he's actually watching you and going, oh, okay. And gets mm. it. Right? Yes. And so I think that um, that's... That's important. It's very rare to Big find time. people yeah. like that. Yeah, in, it's, in, it's our, just in our for, space. If you're a skateboarder trying to express your feelings about what you want to someone... Right. That's a huge. Almost. He's a key person. Do. For sure. Oh yeah, that yeah, yeah. No, Eric, Eric, Eric. Yeah, it's uh, he's 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 a. Uh, uh, I remember when he came to. Uh, he worked at Transworld. He was a writer, and then I, I think talking to him, he was like, I. Uh, he realized like, do I? I mean, I'm going to be a 40 year old man one day. As are people going to be interested in what I want to say? So then he went back to university. Wow. And then he went and worked at uh, Taylor Made Golf Clubs. Oh, yeah. Which is interesting because you think know, I, I don't play golf, but if, you, if what I assume about golf, it's a feeling, mm. right? Mm -hmm. it, there's a swing, there's a flex, there's a feeling, mm -hmm. very similar to skateboarding. And he worked there, and I, mm -hmm. I, I just called him up one day because I knew he was an engineer, and I was like, Eric, I think what I said to him was, um, "Do you miss skateboarding?" <laughs> <laughs> what a great leeway, right? That was my, oh, no. that was my first line <laughs> to him. Just him. So good. And he was like, "Yeah, let's have dinner." So we 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 hooked up and and yeah, and, so and yeah, it's, he's been in the business for a long time great. and he's a great contributor to the to to dwindle, as are many people in the group. That's like how I said. you got him over to the other side. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> I, love it. I mean, again, going back to that fourteen-year-old self. Yeah. If you if you're like, I can go over here and there's a factory there and they're gonna make what I ask them to do and they're gonna do this that and the other. It's like pretty fun. That's yeah, so you know, it yeah. is. Yeah, that's that's so that's rad. definitely a a, a a fun thing. So, yeah. How do you know you need an engineer for the job? And honed in on that. Yeah. yeah. That's in well, you want a skateboarder, but you also need to be able to translate your thoughts and ideas into specs, specs, files. And the big thing is not just being able to take your idea into making one off. It's about how do you then mass produce it, commercialize it. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you take an idea and then go, all right, there's a, there's a ceiling to the cost. Yeah. So how do we how do we manufacture mm. in, into it? And totally. I think where Eric came from actually was he was working at TaylorMade and he worked in their commercialization department, which was in between the propeller heads of Wild Ideas and the suppliers. Mm. So he was like in that role of figuring out how do we take these ideas and and move it so over it there. Like so a perfect idea. And then person. again, I cannot un I can't like underplay like the experience we have over there at the factory. Again, these. The the, the the line managers there and the, the, the and QC number one who again will d talk to you about you know through a translator talk to you about you know whatever manufacturing process and you know they don't skateboard but they listen yes yes and you 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 try to articulate the result mm. and off they go and they come back and then you play around with yeah, it and you go through a few iterations and you get there and I think that we make a good consistent. Board, I yeah. as well as many other things totally yeah. man and the super sap as well I, mm -hmm. but yeah thanks for uh sharing all that with yeah, us because well, yeah. I, I think it's amazing you know the uh the com compostable bag yeah the uh well, i think the glue i think again we, we to touch on this it's like it's about just doing things yeah. in the same spirit of skateboarding like just just do it right like, go for it what do you guys want to see yourself like 10 years from now sustainability wise I'd like to have zero plastic mm. in. I'd like to have, the next step for me would be to have like some really clear goals on how much waste material comes out of the factory. Mm -hmm. Measure that, evaluate that, and then work on reducing that. And sure. ways, ways, ways to do that. Mm -hmm. So more efficient, more efficient manufacturing. Um, materials that improve like the life of a board, the performance of a board, the, uh, 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 you know, how could, you know, it's interesting. So we make those impact light boards, mm -hmm. big carbon fiber insert on the top. So a strange byproduct of that is you will never actually break that carbon fiber into two pieces, mm. right? Hmm. And I've seen so many people, ankle, knee injuries, land snap, splits, you know yes. what I mean? Yes. 
But I look at those boards and I go, when they do break, because everything ultimately breaks. And mm -hmm. if you're making a board that doesn't break, it's probably not going to feel good. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's not going to feel right. Right. So when we don't make so, but the fact they don't break into two pieces, I go, there's actual sort of a safety value there. I'm not going to talk about it because there's liability issues and this I've, is a, a litigious, yeah. litigious, litigious so world we live in. But for real. the fact of knowing that a board will never actually break into two pieces. Yeah, we're, we're so, split apart. Yeah. To, to me is like a little sense in the back of my mind. I'm not going to do the splits. Amazing. I'm not going to blow my, my knee out yeah. in that way. Um, so there's those. So where do I want to see products going? Something that sounds corny, but gives value to mm -hmm. the skateboarder that's buying it. Mm -hmm. You want to make something that they're going, hey, this is 60, 70, 80 bucks. Well worth, worth spent. You want to have, you want to, you know, I want to give them a quality product. It's exactly. going to last for a while. Yeah. 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 For sure. It's just want to make, just want to make, I want to make good shit and have fun yeah. along yeah. the way, right? Yep. Yeah, is that, yeah, that's yeah. kind of like, if you so can do that in life, that's a, that's a no pretty good thing. Let's do that all day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's, make, let's make some good stuff. Yes. Um, uh, where is that like button right? Is it right here or right here? Just a little scroll um, coming down the bottom. It's, it's Subscribe. over to, yeah, it's on your it's on my left. Right. No, on your left. Hey, yeah, hit that button right there. Right there. Right there. Yeah, please. The, the like button's kind of like in the in the right middle there. there. It's like we're kind of. Like oh, it's there. like right here. Kind of. Like yeah, right there. The subscribes like over to the left. <laughs> it's like right over there. Yeah.